Hey guys, Greg Mikhovich here from the Underground Gym. Today I'm going to show you 8 basic ground mobility exercises for your back, for your lumbar and thoracic areas of the spine. Mostly lumbar, but we're going to throw a few thoracic exercises in there as well. And those exercises are going to make you feel good after a strenuous repetitive activity. For example, you've been sitting for a while, or you've been shoveling snow, or driving all day, or something like that. Also, it's a great general warm-up, a part of a good general warm-up, mobility warm-up before your workout. Uh, stay tuned guys and enjoy. Alright, so the first exercise is going to be diagonal bridge. We're going to get on the ground, on our back, lift the hips off the floor, try to get it as high as you can, activate our glutes. We're going to push the knees apart, I don't want your knees to be collapsing inwards, I want the shin to be fairly vertical, so the knees are right over the feet. I want your heels to be on the ground, glute activation. So don't be on your toes, try to keep the whole surface the whole bottom surface of the foot on the ground. We're going to bridge up, all right? And now, we're going to imagine there's like a cross right here, we're going diagonally, this way and this way. We're going to bridge and try to push this way as much as possible. Pushing off this foot right here off my heel, driving off my glute, diagonally across this way. Come back to my upper back, push off this heel through the glute, Drive it open this way, reaching hard, okay? Coming back, imagine there's like a sharp implement right here. I don't want to bring my hips down and poke myself. I want to stay nice and high so my glutes activated the whole time. Keep your knees pushed out. Open up, inhale, exhale, come back. Inhale, exhale, come back. As you just start this drill out, you can go in this position and kind of spend some time here opening yourself up before switching. After you get lubricated a little bit, you can start doing it more dynamically. Excellent exercise for posterior, core, uh, posterior chain activation and also it begins to loosen up your lower back. Enjoy! Next exercise is Reverse Scorpio. So again, we're going to engage the ground, uh, get on our back. All right, get our arms nice and wide, perpendicular to the torso, basically at a 90 degree angle. You lie down flat, we're going to turn the hips, so the hips are going to turn, and then the top leg is going to reach out and try to touch my palm. I'm going to come back, turn my hips, top leg reaches out and reaches for the opposing hand. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. The key here is the turn of the hips. I try to minimize the lift of the leg. So I try to minimize lift and reach. You can certainly it'll be done that way too, but a better way is turn the hips and there's minimal height, minimal elevation of the foot. Exhale, reach, inhale, come back. Exhale, reach, inhale, come back. For a little bit additional spinal rotation, what you could do is you could turn your head the opposing way. So if my foot travels this way, I'm going to look the opposing way with this hand and vice versa. What I'm also trying to do, I'm trying to flex my quadriceps to release the hamstring and to keep this leg as straight as possible. Excellent exercise. Give it a try. Enjoy. Alright, the next exercise is going to be rotational straddle push-up. So, we're going to get into a straddle, keeping our legs as wide as we can. We're going to also further open ourselves up a bit. All right, I'm going to turn over, imagine that my spine is like a is like a t-shirt that I'm trying to wring out and then make it dry, essentially. So I'm going to turn my hip over, this leg is rotating, elongating my spine, trying to reach out to the top of my head, keep my elbows off the floor, shoulders are down, perform a push-up. Inhale, coming back, turn, push-up. Inhale, coming back, exhale on rotation. The tendency in this exercise is for the legs slowly, slowly to creep closer and closer together. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to keep them wide apart the entire time. The focus is to open it up the whole time. So open up the legs. And each and every time I'm trying to twist the spine out, make it long, 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 each and every vertebrae all the way up to here. Make sure that your elbows are not collapsing. All right, your elbows are high. But your shoulders are not up here either. Your shoulders are down, using your lats to pull the shoulders down. Exhale. All 
Another superb exercise for spine mobilization. Enjoy. And now I'm going to cover a Scorpio, basic version of the Scorpio. So we're going to lie down prone, facing the ground, arms are wide apart, perpendicular to the torso. There are a couple of ways to do this. First one is I'm looking to basically activate my hamstrings, glutes, and lower back. So I'm going to curl my leg up as high as I can, like a scorpion. Exhale, try to reach for the opposing palm. Inhale, come back. Curl the leg up. Exhale, come back. I'm doing my best to keep the majority of my chest down on the floor. What's going to happen is you're going to be, rock, you're going to, you're going to be rocking side to side slightly and part of your chest is going to get elevated. That's all right. What I'm looking not to do is lift it way up. Lift it way up. That defeats the purpose of the exercise. So one more time. Exhale. Inhale. It's an active stretch, so I'm pulling with my hamstring, glute, spinal erector, reaching actively. It's not a passive position. Second way for me to do this is the leg gets no elevation, so I'm trying to stay nice and streamlined. Turn, exhale, turn, exhale. So the key here, again, just like with the reverse scorpion, is uh, the turn of the hips. That's what allows my leg to articulate sideways. Some people will have a problem with this version. They will kind of just kind of curl their leg up and uh, there's going to be no activation of the musculature of the back. That's why the first exercise is there to teach you that and then from there on you transition to more advanced version where you turn your hips and you stay nice and streamlined right along the floor. Enjoy. And now I'm going to cover prone reverse scorpion. So it's similar to a regular scorpion, but this time I'm going to be prone facing down. So the key here again is the turn of the hips. I'm going to turn my hips. The bottom leg is going to thread under. I'm going to exhale and try to touch my opposing hand. Come back, turn my hips. That gives me an opening. Exhale, reach. Just like in that regular scorpion exercise, I'm doing my best to keep my chest down to a degree. So, turn, exhale, turn, exhale. The hips articulate all the way through 180 degrees. Excellent exercise. Give it a try. Now I'm going to show you guys prone pretzel rotation. This exercise seems a bit complex, but it's not really. Uh, after you give it a, a last try, you'll figure it out fairly easily. Everybody has a little bit of an issue with this exercise in the beginning, coordination-wise, but once they give it a few tries, it usually, you know, usually goes pretty well. So, first thing, we're going to kind of break it apart just a little bit, just so for full understanding. All right, so let's take a look at what lower body does first. So, I'm going to be prone with my arms wide apart perpendicular to the body and what I'm going to do with my with my feet with my legs is I'm going to raise my knee right along the floor exhaling trying to touch my triceps come back turn the other way exhale raise the knee come back so one more time exhale raise the knee come back exhale raise the knee come back fairly simple right now let's figure out what the arms do imagine your arms are tied together with a stick going across my arm across my back and then across to the other back. So now the arms are one piece. All right. There's a pivot point right here somewhere. And then if I move this arm down, let's say five inches, this arm moves up five inches and vice versa. See, arms are one piece. So it's never going to be like this. This arm moves down and I kind of forget about the other arm. Or this arm moves down so much, but this arm goes way ahead. No good. So arms are one piece. And now I need to realize for this, for this exercise, I need to move in a plane of the floor. I don't want to be lifting my arms up too much or anything like that. So I'm going to start moving the arms. Arm is going to move right over my hip. Just as much as this arm moves down, this arm goes across and the knee raises up. I'm going to lay my head on the ground 
and hang out in this position for a little bit. Come back. This arm moves up, this arm moves down, across my hips, in the plane of the floor. Switch positions. So the knee rises up on the same side as the arm going down. Come back. Arm is going down, that means that this knee is rising up. It's a nice spinal rotation. Here, don't keep your neck up. Relax for a second, hang out. Usually when I do this exercise, first few times, I spend a little bit of time in this position. Let my body dissolve into the stretch. And then I can start doing the stretch a little bit more dynamically. So again, the keys are arms move as one, knee comes up right along the floor on the side where the arm is coming down. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Awesome exercise. Enjoy. And now we're going to cover a kneeling, what I call kneeling cat stretch. So we're going to get into a kneeling position, tuck our toes. All right. We can certainly do this exercise from here with our butt away from our heels, but I find that most people, they start moving, they start wiggling their hips around too much and it takes away from the purpose of the exercise. So one of the tricks you can do is you can push your butt back towards your heels, all right, and that limits the hips, and so now we're left just with the chest. However, the elbows also can come into play, so what you want to monitor is the elbows, all right? Don't let them bend, keep them nice and straight. Imagine your arm is one piece, all right? You can flex the, the triceps and the biceps a little bit in the beginning if it helps, Essentially, you want to be somewhat relaxed, but if it helps in the beginning to understand that this is not happening, you know, let it be. So, I'm going to be here, shoulders are packed with our lats, drop the chest down, I'm trying to reach with the chest, I'm trying to reach a point right here, really hard. So drop, inhale as I come back to neutral, exhale, try to raise up like a cat. Raise up as much as you can. I'm trying to take this point right here on my spine and try to reach point on the ceiling right there. So, let's spend some time. When you think that you got the range of motion that you, that you have, try a little bit more and you'll be surprised. You're going to find a little bit more. Inhale, exhale. Remember to, not to give with the elbows. Remember not to give with the shoulders. Keep the shoulders packed. Take your time, it's a slow exercise. It can certainly be done a little bit more dynamically, but it's best done slow first. Enjoy. All right, and the last exercise for today is gonna to be kneeling thoracic rotation, or simply kneeling chest rotation. All right, so we're gonna get in the same position. We can certainly do this exercise from here for more advanced practitioners. If you can focus on locking your hips in place and not moving them much, and just focus on your chest, on your thoracic area of the spine. But for most people, it's kind of difficult in the beginning, so it's best to learn this exercise from here. Again, you settle your hips back on your heels, shoulders are packed, elbows are straight. We're gonna drop the chest down, Reach with the chest to the side as much as we can. Reach up to the side, down. To the side, up. To the side, down. In the beginning, it's beneficial not to do this super fast or fast at all because you're going to be skipping your available range of motion. You're not going to be going to the full range of motion. So first, explore. Really go on the perimeter of your full available range of motion. Maximize. So down to the side, up, up as much as I can, to the side, down, and here, instead of the uh, chest, there's a mistake of people kind of dropping the elbows, straightening the elbows, dropping the elbows, straightening the elbows. So what I do a lot of times when I, when I instruct this exercise, I hold the person's, I'm right next to the person, I hold the elbow to help them give them a little bit of feedback, a little bit of tactile feedback on how the elbow is positioning. If you're doing it by yourself, you don't have that option, so just monitor your elbows carefully as you're doing this exercise. Again, drop, uh, drop the chest to the side, 
up. Obviously, you're going to do it to both sides. Down to the side, up. And reverse. Maximize that range of motion. Move your chest in as big of a circle as you can. Superb exercise for your back. Enjoy. Alright guys, so there you have it. Eight basic ground mobility exercises for your back. Superb exercises for mobilizing your back, for lubricating it. And use those exercises regular on a regular basis. Include them into your warm-ups. Include them into your morning recharge routines or post-work uh, recharge routines. Also, if you're sitting all day, those are just awesome for mobilizing your low back and getting you out of that, you know, forward flexion position, getting you opened up and your back lubricated. Enjoy them. Let me know if you have any questions. Undergroundgym.com. Greg Mikhovich. Live strong.